Common Core standards are pretty much here right now. A big part of Common Core is students being able to find information, analyze and read that information, and pick out what's important. They should be able to identify the author's claims and arguments and evidence. And then the students also need to collaborate and to share ideas, think through what they're learning, and then they need to publish that information. Technology is a big part of that. Scribble is a new website that is from San Mateo, and it is an amazing tool that's going to make incorporating Common Core a whole lot easier into all of our classrooms. Now, what Scribble does is it allows students to find and read information online, to do their research, to pick out what's important, and to collaborate with other students and with their teacher, and then publish that information in a written form. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to set up an account and then how to access Scribble on the web. So the very first thing you want to do is click right over here to sign up for free. Now I have already signed up for free so I'm actually going to sign in. But when you sign up for free or you create a sign in, you can create an account using your email and a password or you can choose to log in with your Facebook or Google Plus, etc. One thing just to note is I tried setting it up with my Google account and it works great on the web page, but currently on the iPad, I wasn't able to log in with my Google Plus account. And so what I ended up having to do was change my password around. So what I would suggest for right now until Scribble makes the change, which they will be doing, um, but for right now I'd just recommend creating your um, own username using your email and a password. So I'm going to sign in, and the first thing that happens when you sign in is you get a um, shown a getting started page, and it gives you some information. It lets you know that there are still in a beta form and there might be some bugs. I haven't really run into any on the website using my laptop. Um, it's a little buggy using the iPad, um, but for right now, using it on the website seems to be great. So. Once I have created an account, you need to add what's called a bookmarklet to your web browser. And you can do that by going, clicking here on the bookmarklet page or down here at the bottom. So now let's add the bookmarklet. And it gives you instructions. If you have Google Chrome, it gives you the instructions right here. If you have other browsers like Firefox or Internet Explorer, you can click here for instructions on how to do that. For Google Chrome, the first thing you need to do is make sure you see a bookmark bar, which is this bar here underneath the web address bar. If you do not see that, the way to get to it is to click on these three little lines on the right hand side of your Chrome browser, click on bookmarks, and just check this top line, show bookmarks bar. And then all you have to do is drag this button up to your bookmark bar. And you can see I already have mine up here in the corner, so I'm not actually gonna add it right now. But that's it, it's super simple to do. Now you can search any website you want, and here's one that I found about exactly what the Common Core standards say about technology. Once I'm here, all I do is click on the Scribble toolbar, it loads the Scribble toolbar, and now I have all these choices of tools to use. How this works is if I go down to the text, I read the information that I see, and I'm going to choose different things. I might choose to highlight text, and I can use the highlighter to highlight things that I think might be important. If I don't like the color of that, I can just kind of hover over, click on the arrow, I can delete it, I can change the color, I can even attach a note to it and this note might be some important information that I want to remember and I'd probably summarize it in my own words um, instead of just writing note information right here. Um, now this box right here, see how it's covering up my text? If I click the X it actually deletes it so I don't want to do that. But if I click these little guys here it will minimize them and I can open it back up. I can even move it around if I wanted to. Um, 
but that's something that's really cool where if you have students looking for particular information, they can then summarize it in their own words in these boxes. Now I can also just add in other text boxes and it kind of is highlighting these paragraphs for me. Let's say I want a text box there. I can type in my information and if I click somewhere else, notice that it's not highlighted. That's because I didn't highlight it. I just added in the text box. On the pink one, I highlighted that text and chose to add in that um, text box. But if I hover over it, it will show me which text in the article goes with this um, information. And again, I can change the color if I want to change that up. Now, some other tools that you have are you can actually change the color of the text of certain things by highlighting it, clicking on the red T up there, and I can change the color of the text. I can also underline things. And I can choose to make stuff in bold, italic, or strike through. Um, let's say I wanted to undo. I can click on the undo or redo. What this eye does this eye shows and hides the annotations. So right now you can shoot, you were looking at them. I can click on that and it gets rid of them. So this is what the original website looks like before I added any annotations to it. This icon right here allows me to minimize or maximize all the notes on the paper. So if I want to kind of get them out of the way so I can see, I can minimize them or open them up. Now this next tool is a legend which allows me to annotate or to, to explain what my different colors or what my different things mean. So maybe that this purple text was um, represented, let's say, the author's claims. And maybe what I made in um, green text, this might be the author's evidence if I'm having my students identify claims and evidence for arguments. Um, so I can label all these different things. Now I can share on Twitter, Facebook, I can get a link to be able to um, share with others, I can email. One important thing you want to do is you want to save your information and it takes a minute for this to happen. The page name automatically defaults to the name of the website. I'm going to name it something else just because I already have one in this name saved. So let's just call it CCSS. I can enter comments if I want and I can enter tags which will allow me to search it later. So I can do CCSS and then I can press save. Now it takes a few minutes for that to save. I'm actually going to go over to another page that I had already started. Um, it's the same one. I just actually read it and um, highlighted things that I thought were important rather than just um, showing you um, on the last page. But if I click on my legend here and open it up, so what I highlighted in yellow are what I felt the changes in the Common Core standards are in comparison to um, our previous set of standards. And then what I highlighted in green are the different ways to integrate technology into the Common Core. Now, something that is really awesome about this is when I'm doing research, Sometimes it's challenging to figure out how to cite my sources. And if you've ever tried teaching students this, you know that. On the student version and on the instructor version of Scribble, you will see these quotation marks. It's a citation generator. And what it does is it gives you the information that it can find in the website. Sometimes it can't find the author, but if you search through it, you can add in the author. Um, you can add in the published date, which is shown on the website up here. And um, you can choose what format you want, APA, MLA, etc. And you can change that up later as well. Um, and then you can get your citation, which you can then cut and paste into something you want. I'm going to close that right now. Um, it is important to um, always save your work because this doesn't auto save. So I'm just going to press save. I've already saved it before. If you want to change the name of it, you can click on this arrow and do save as, or you can create a shortcut. But what I want to show you now how to do is how to use this information that you've taken notes on 
and then incorporate that into maybe a report that you're writing. So if you click right here on the library, this is going to open up your Scribble library. And here are a bunch of documents of me just kind of playing around with this. It gives you some tips. I'm going to dismiss the tips for right now. But what I can do is I can choose the documents. I'm just going to choose all of them right now. And I can create a bibliography. And it takes all the documents that had websites and it puts it in the proper um, bibliography form. And I can change it to the different styles. Um, it doesn't have, doesn't tab automatically over for you in that way, um, but it gives it to you all in the right like order with the author, all that sort of stuff. Now I can also create a summary. So let's say I wanted to kind of know what I highlighted and what notes I wrote in those little post-it notes. I can click on create a summary and it shows me a summary of all the different websites that I chose in my library and what I highlighted, what I underlined, etc. So this is going to be great for students after they've done a bunch of research on a bunch of different websites to kind of organize the information that they want. Now my favorite part is that students can add this to their report so they can write their essay or their report by clicking add to report. And you can create a new report or add it to an existing report that maybe they've already started. So let's call this CCSS report. And I'm going to press add. Now what you see on the right hand side is a text editor. On the left hand side is all of my sources that I have looked at. So I can collapse it just to see the names of it, I can expand it, and I can see what information I highlighted or underlined. So um, this is the one that I actually read and highlighted. Um, let's say I want to have these um, sorts of information and I want to include those two things in my paper. These are things that I highlighted, so these are from the actual text, so then I'd want to go in and add in my quotation marks, or I might rewrite it in my own words at this point. But what's awesome also is if I click this box right here, include bibliography, oops, where'd it go? It automatically adds the bibliography to the bottom of my paper. I can also, sometimes it's hard to write in the small box, if I click right here on this icon it maximizes the screen so it's a little easier to write. Now this can be saved into Scribble. I can email this document and other people can access it. However, if I wanted to let's say turn this in, or put it on a Word document or on a Google Doc, currently it doesn't do that, I'd have to press um, control A or command A and copy and paste this into a Word document after let's say I finished actually typing up my whole report but Scribble has said that they would like to incorporate um, being able to save this as a Word document or as a PDF or into Google Drive so hopefully that will be coming soon. So you can see that Scribble is going to be an amazing tool for students to be able to take multiple sources of information that are presented on the web in diverse formats. They're going to make strategic use of that digital media. They're going to publish their own information after collaborating with other students, collaborating with their teacher. So this is going to cover a lot of the Common Core standards that are used in every subject area. So I'm very excited to start using Scribble with my students and also for my personal use.